Alex Dell, and I'm a software engineer. Today we are going to talk about cash and memory. So what exactly is cash? Is that cash? Like money? No, it's not. This is actually a high-speed access area that can be a reserved section of main memory or storage device. Cache is not only on hardware but also in software. That refers to data structure that keeps calculated data to avoid redoing expensive processing. Think of it as a temporary place that is especially clo temporarily closer to the processing center, like CPU. But why do we need a temporary faster place? Well, because it will save lots of time repeating expensive requests to retrieve data. For example, cache in your browser store media files so you won't make expensive requests to download them again. And it makes showing a web page much faster. Think of the first time you go to a website. It usually takes longer to load since the browser needs to make a lot of requests to download HTML, JavaScript, and image files. It becomes much faster in subsequent visits because those files are now stored on your local disk, so it won't take a few seconds to download those files again. Similarly, cache and hardware helps processing faster. Cache is made of special material that is a portion of high-speed static RAM, which is a computer memory that requires a constant power flow to hold information. Cache is effective because most programs access the same data or instructions over and over. By keeping as much of this information as possible in the status RAM, the computer avoids accessing the slower DRAM or hard drive, making the computer perform faster and more efficiently. You may want to ask, I'm still confused. Why does it help? Think of this scenario. You are working on some projects at home, and you need some information. Suppose that you are living in the 60s, when there is no internet connection, there is no Google or Bing. What would you do? Of course, like any other scholars at a time, you would go to the closest library to find the information that you need. So you would walk a few miles to the library, go to each bookshelf, and find the relevant books. You read there and try to memorize as much as you can. Then you come home and try to solve the problems. What could go wrong? Well, your human brain is limited, unless you have superpower, which doesn't count. You can't memorize the whole library. So when you forget some information, you will have to go back to the library and back home. So how can you solve this problem? The easiest solution is borrowing a few books home, right? Since you can't borrow the whole library, you will rent a few books and take them home. In that way, you can save time going back and forth between home and the library. With those books, you can use for multiple projects too. Once you're done, just go back to the library and return the books. Now, let's talk about cache principles. Cache works on the basis of locality or program behavior. There are three principles in votes. The first one is spatial locality. Spatial locality refers to the use of data elements within relatively close storage locations. Instructions and data are transferred from memory to the cache in fixed blocks. After the first memory access, all cache-like data are available in cache. Most programs are highly sequential. Next instructions usually comes from the next memory location. Data is usually structured, and data normally are stored in contiguous memory locations, like data, strings, or uh, arrays. For example, if you go to a library, would you borrow only one book and then go back to the library when you need more information? I don't think it's a good idea. Instead, we should borrow a few books at once, so we can save some time going back to the library. The next one is temporal locality. This is a complementary to spatial locality. It refers to the reuse of specific data or resources within a relatively small time duration. For example, the books that you read to do the projects are likely relevant to what you will do in the near future. The last one is sequentiality. Given that a reference has been made to a particular location S, it is likely that within the next several references, a reference to the location of S plus 1 will be made. Sequentiality is a restricted type of spatial loca locality and can be regarded as a subset of it. That's it for today. We have learned about the basic of caches and why did it matter. The next video will go into further details of cache entries structure and cache associativity. 
I hope this video is helpful to you. Please leave a comment below this video and let us know what you would like to learn next. Goodbye.